five, indicate the most important types of intermolecular attractions in each of the following solutions. And then we have HCl gas, which is in benzene, which is C6H6 liquid. Okay, so between HCl and C6H6, we have to find out the most important, which basically means the highest level of intermolecular attractions. Now, the first thing is, let's just classify these molecules or compounds as covalent or ionic. But if I look for H or Cl or carbon or H again, all of these are nonmetals. So both HCl and C6H6 are both going to be listed as covalent molecules. And if you have a covalent molecule, you should, not that you should, but it would be easier to see it visually in lieu of structure. It does take one extra step, but if you see it, you know, visually, um, it will help you out with doing this problem. And then over time, as you get better at, you know, seeing what HCl looks like, what seeing these compounds look like, you'll be able to do that, you know, in your head and then be able to answer the question. But for, you know, teaching purposes, I'm just going to put the uh, Lewis structure on the screen. And if you want to pause the video, since we did tons of Lewis structure practice on the channel, you could try to make your, you know, Lewis structure yourself and see if it checks out with mine. So for HCl, right, I have hydrogen and then I have chlorine and there's a single bond between them and chlorine has the six lone electrons. So that would be what HCl looks like. Now, benzene might be a little bit of a challenge. Benzene is more of kind of like a memorization, uh, molecule here in gen chem, but you will get to know and love it if you take organic. And hopefully um, at some point um, we will be teaching organic on this channel. So if you're in the future, hello, <laughs> um, just go check the channel. We might have organic uh, questions for you as well. But for benzene specifically, this is in a ring. It's a carbon ring. So it's like a hexagon because there's six carbons. And you have, I just want to make these, just want to make these nice and symmetrical so that it works out perfectly. Let's just bring this one a little bit in here. Okay. And what benzene is going to look like is it has the six hydrogens around each carbon. And those are all bound singly because remember, hydrogen cannot have more than a single bond. So I have that. Let's do the single bond. Single, 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 and single. And then around the ring is a continuous loop of single and double bonds. So one CC will get a single bond, the next one will get a double bond, then the next one gets a single, and then a double, and then a single, and then a double. And the, the, the loop never stops because if you keep going and going and going, um, yeah, you'll get stuck in this like spiral. <laughs> but anyway, that's benzene. So the next thing that we have to do is figure out if HCl and C6H6, are they polar or nonpolar? And remember the acronym SNAP, S-N-A-P. The N stands for nonpolar, and the P stands for polar. The S and the N go together, and the A and the P go together. If your molecule is symmetrical, so it looks the same if you cut it right down the middle, it would be nonpolar. But if your molecule looks asymmetrical, it's polar. So if I cut down the HCl right down the middle, I mean, clearly we have a difference here. We have H on one side and Cl on the other. That is asymmetrical. So this molecule would be classified as polar. But for benzene, if I cut it down the middle here, it kind of will look the same. If I cut it down the middle through here, right? We have just carbons, you know, three carbons and uh, three hydrogens on one side. And um, they're all basically the same, three carbons, three hydrogens, no matter where I cut it. So benzene is a nonpolar molecule because it's all symmetrical. Um, now, Sorry, I was like, what? So now from here, we can find out what the intermolecular attractions are. Because remember, if you have a nonpolar molecule, the only attraction that you got is dispersion. 
So all molecules in general will always have dispersion forces, but only if you're nonpolar do you just have dispersion forces because you have no dipoles. This one, polar, it has dispersion forces because that's the gimme. And since this is polar, this also has a dipole-dipole force. Or potentially it does if it was bound with other HCl molecules. However, since we're dealing with two different molecules, you have to pick the intermolecular attraction or the force that is the same between them. That's the most important. And since they both have just dispersion forces, that's the force that's going to work between the two of them. It can't be dipole-dipole because even though HCl can have dipole-dipole attractions, the nonpolar one can't. So that's why that one's out. So for this one, the answer is dispersion. Attractions or dispersion force, doesn't matter. But dispersion, you could also know this as London forces or van der Waals. They all mean the same thing but dispersion is used here. Hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for coming to the video and learning from the video. I really hope I helped you out. Um, if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will talk to you soon. All right. Happy studying. Bye-bye.